So imagine this, you're walking up to your Ford car with your fob and you're ready to unlock it, but nothing's happening. Why is that? Your battery's dead? No, it turns out Woody is nefariously hiding behind your Ford with a software-defined radio hacksawing your car, this time on Hack 5. Okay, key fob's working. So, I'm gonna do a capture. Hit record. Lock. Unlock. There we go. Unlock it. Pop the trunk. Should be good. Okay. Now, replay it. Make sure you put your antenna on when you replay. A lot of times, take your antenna off, you'll get a cleaner capture. You won't have as much bleed over. Only um, on the receive, though. Yeah, only on the receive, and only because I'm so close. So now, I hit replay, open file, spin it down. Okay. Replay the signal. And now, if things worked right, da -da. there we go, that should be enough. Go ahead and try to... What's happening, Shannon? <laughs> it's not working! Essentially, Shannon's locked out of the car. Yes. What happened is the key fob is disabled, so if you don't have the RFID feature where you can walk up and just touch the handle and it unlocks, it completely disables you from being able to get in the car unless you know how to do your other techniques. Well, I mean, okay. If I'm honest, I've heard of the techniques where, you know, you're, you're out for drinks with your buddy, <clears throat> they leave their keys on the table, they go to the washroom, and you just hit the unlock button 255 times, you roll it over, and, uh, and then they go to unlock and, and it's a new code and, and they're out of luck. Well, and so, How does this differ from that? What, what's, what's actually going on here? Well, recently they've actually switched it to where there's between 64 and 65,000 codes. So you're not able to do that when it used to be between 16 and well, 200. Well, it depends on how persistent you are out of drinks with your friends. True. But the other thing that happens with this is when the vehicle sees certain things happening, you can actually disable the other key fob. So if I disable the key fob, and we come over to the vehicle now, the big issue is, okay, so I'm gonna lock the vehicle. Shannon, if you had to come, hold on, don't press it yet, but um, what we'll do is, I lock the vehicle, and what we'll talk about is, what do you need to do to actually unlock the vehicle? Because when the key fob isn't working anymore, so go ahead and take the key out of it. This is the technique you're supposed to be able to do, no problem, and everyone's, supposed to know this. <laughs> so now, unlock the vehicle. Just with the key? Yep. I don't know where it goes. Oh. There you go. Now some Wait, of what? Them, Show me? Some of them actually have a piece you have to remove. Wait. I have no idea. Eh. So it's fairly user eh. friendly. Just oh my god. Push it all the way in. Come on, Shannon. Zombies are coming towards you. You this gotta is, get in the car. This is not user friendly. <laughs> Shit, I'm so screwed. <laughs> the zombies are gonna kill me. No. Wait, it's like really hard to press in there. Yeah, well that's the thing. A lot of these are designed and they're they're not. There you go. Did you, oh. Yep, now give it a pull. So, you, and that's the other thing is you can't pull it too hard or it will actually, and yeah. So now, what the? oh, so you gotta but pull it well after you take it out. But anybody would be that's... able to do that. Yeah, clearly. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Okay. Can I lock it? Oh wait, my fob doesn't work. <laughs> oh, and that's the other thing. Hold on. <laughs> what, what, what's going on now? Well, so here's here's what's interesting about that, right? <laughs> now, when I disable your key fob. Your car goes into emergency mode, and if you use the key to get into it, yeah. if you don't reset the key fob or start the car in a certain amount of time, now your alarm goes off. But your key fob still won't work. So now now I'm gonna lock the vehicle, so don't touch anything. So I locked it, okay? And now, because I know you really wanna get in there, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll work on seeing if maybe we can get in the vehicle or, 
be able to get in there through some other means. Okay, so we'll work on doing that. Set a couple things up. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, thank you so much, stalker. <laughs> there you go. Wait, 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 wait. So what were you doing there? Well, were you replaying the code from earlier or what, what was going on? So there's a little bit of, so go, your key fob's disabled again. So go ahead and try to use it. Okay, so there we go. So your key fob's not working. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, at this point, I'm going to lock the vehicle. Okay, okay. so I lock the vehicle. Now, just so you know, I'll leave the key. I'm not touching anything. Unlocked, went through everything that needed to be done. And now your key fob will also work again. Wait, how that did you, you. <laughs> re-key the original key fob? The step that I did there is a little bit different than uh, what I'm gonna show right now. At DEF CON we'll release a little more, but I wanna give Ford a chance to work and fix on some of these things. So does your key fob work? Yes. There we go. So you can go ahead and look at her key fob. So it works now after you've gotten access. Yes. So for all I, I know, so for all I know, like somebody could be sitting in the back seat of my car and I would be none the wiser because none of the windows are broken or anything. Sure. You could have locked the car again and then my key fob works just fine now. So I would come up to my car, open the door and get in like normal. Yes. This is why I always check the back seat because of people like you. Always. <laughs> Not me. I'm protecting people. <laughs> so, but, but no, so that's one of the things that we, re we really wanted to bring out in this is that... You know, there's, there's a lot of factors that come into play with this, and one of them is the denial of service. I'm not jamming. So using this technique, what would the deployment scenario be like if, if you wanted to say you, you knew a place where you could gather get, codes and, and deny them eventually? Yeah, so one of the things that you would look at is if you took an apartment complex. Yeah. Uh, we wrote a script so that it only triggers on Ford key fobs. It'll tell us which key fob. So I know that, oh, I have key fob zero, one, two, three, or four, whichever one it is for that vehicle. And these are all uniquely identified? Uh, yes, you're able to, to identify them. So then I would be able to, to get the identification for them. I would be able to lock, unlock, start, open the trunk, any of those things that I wanted to do, I would now be able to do by having that. Um, so when I have those codes, I can actually do a replay attack. It takes a few extra steps and to do a replay, like to start the car, which some of you have seen on yeah. Seth's article, um, it took me about three hours when I got my new Raptor of uh, testing to be able to get this down and wired, but now I've got pretty good steps ready to go where you can see I can recreate it fairly easily. Um, so I, I thought the whole thing with the replay attack though was that there's a rolling code and there's so many possibilities that you're not gonna be able to, uh, and wouldn't you get locked out at a certain point if you're just spamming codes? You would, however, what we're doing is tricking the car into resetting its count to zero. So every code that I capture, if I set up a sniffer, as long as I play them in order, I'm fine. So the scenario is you drop a box in a planter pot somewhere in a, an yep. apartment complex or something where there's a bunch of Ford vehicles and in the morning when people go to work and they unlock their cars, you collect all those unique codes. Now you've got that huge list of unique codes. You're saying you can transmit something back to the cars that resets them essentially to factory default where they're gonna accept a new key fob or, or, or what? What it will do is the key fob that I captured that I ha has that rolling code, Yeah. it resets the car's counter to zero for that key fob. So all of those codes that I captured- You can use again? As long as I play them in order. Now, once you <laughs> use your key fob, then I, it would be a higher number, I would now lose access. Sure, sure. However, if two people live together, fairly common occurrence here in America and around the world, they usually have their own keys. So if I just label your capture A and your capture B. Right, two key fobs to the same yep, car, but and, both e and now independently, I, uniquely yep, identifiable. And now I see that A comes out. Well, then all I have to do is do the denial service attack for B, follow you, and now at that point, all of my access to your vehicle to lock it, unlock it, whatever I want is indefinite until, until the other B is used again, comes around. as long as I play them in order. Wow. That's so creepy. This vehicle had eight miles when we picked it up from the airport, what's, 2019. What's the attack surface here? 
Well, so 315 is what a lot of the vehicles are using if they don't have the, re uh, the remote start on the key fob. So 315, like we're used to seeing in most vehicles. However, for that, the range, 50, 100 yards, pretty safe with a yeah. good antenna. Now, the ones that, like my Raptor, you can push a button and you can start that from a pretty good distance, just like the Mustang in the video. I was over 100 yards away on the third floor of a hotel. So they moved to 900 so that you could start your car from a greater distance. And what that did was it increased Wait, that means that the you as event. the attacker can listen from even further away. Especially because we are actually setting up our listeners to listen to very exact frequencies. And we also have it set up so that it sees the preamble and then we have trigger points so that it will only record things that follow a certain code sequence. Sure, so you're able to systematically obtain these keys from a decent distance at that point. Yes. The question then becomes like, what tools do you need to gather these? Uh, they, they get pretty expensive. An, RT, an RTL SDR is gonna run you anywhere from 15 to 21 depending where you get it. That's oh my gosh. That's so expensive. Wow, 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 20 bucks to capture codes. Um, I mean. If you can't find a computer or borrow one, you could just get a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> okay, I get it, I get it. So a Raspberry Pi <laughs> or and a RTL zero. SDR. You might be able to run on a zero. I haven't tested that. All right, so some change in parts and, and that's all you need to capture these signals. Yes. Uh, what, what's the modulation technique? So it's using uh, Frequency shift keying is what it's doing. So instead of on off keying where you just get I'm on or I'm off, yeah. it is actually using multiple frequencies and it shifts back and forth and that's how it delegates its ones and zeros. So sub gigahertz, 315 or 900 megahertz, Yes. Uh, frequency shift keying. I know a little device that uses Python to speak that pretty easily. In fact, we just had Mike Osman on Yardstick One, just saying. Yes. And we're That's working insane. right now to get the uh, RTL 433. We're trying to get the 900 band and the newer key fobs to see if we can get them programmed in so that people with RTL 433 would be able to listen with this. Um, the big goal that we want is to show people the mindset mm -hmm. when building security protocols. But we also want to teach people the security side of this because there's there's some security risks. You know, any of us that no have joke. wives, I mean, daughters, anybody, security. Yeah. like. I don't like this. So I want everyone to realize, hey, you need to know how to take your key out and get into your vehicle if for some reason it doesn't work. If your key fob, if you have a Ford, I love my Ford. I'm not saying anything negative about Ford. In fact, the only reason this works is because they were attempting to stop replay attacks. We just found a glitch in there. Yeah. I have found glitches in other manufacturers, but because I don't own those manufacturers, I couldn't document it as well. So I don't want to beat up on Ford. There are other manufacturers that have as many vulnerabilities, some of them worse. Sure. I don't think that this is bad because Ford tried to ignore it. They were very aggressive in the technique they used to try to stop a replay attack. But and in it doing actually, so, they actually opened up it, other It vectors. opened up the vector. But at least... You know, we've talked to them and they were they were receptive. So I'm hoping that as they move forward, that's why I'm not releasing um, any more of the code or our captures, um, like the Raptor capture that we have for GNU Radio until after DEF CON. Um, Cause I'm gonna do this talk at the Wireless Village. Um, so in the Wireless Village, we'll give the whole talk, go through this, show more of it. Um, we'll actually have the GNU script there that people will be able to get at that point. We'll open up the GitHub after that. But I want to give a few more months for Ford to be able to look at this and figure out what they need to do. And that's responsible disclosure. And that was kind of my first thought when you told me about this and we, we were chatting privately. First thought was like, hey, what did Ford say? You know, do you need some help getting uh, uh, an in there? And uh, after having spoken to them now, what was the response? It was Several people at Ford were very receptive. Um, they were um, really good to talk to. They were receptive. Uh, we exchanged emails for about a month. We had a phone call. Um, there was only one person there who didn't seem very receptive. Uh, there was an engineer who quite literally started by saying, well, hey, I'm pretty impressed of what someone like you was able to figure out. That's actually what he said. And then I said, okay. I said, well, you know, we've, we've done this. You know, we'd like to help, you know, whatever you need. And then he goes, well, I want you to run the test like this. And he gave me parameters to run the test. When I ran his test, it did not work. And he said, see, it doesn't work. I said, yes, but when I run it any of my other ways, it does. He goes, mm. yes, but not if you run it the way I do the test. <laughs> so if you grade your own test, it works. Oh, shh. <laughs> but Doctor, I, it, it but hurts I will when say, I move my arm this way. But I will say, he was the only one that 
didn't seem receptive. Yeah. Everyone else on their team really did. In fact, um, Ford, it was very hard for me to find out about their bug bounty program. And what I found out was that they are using Hacker One. But at the time when I went on Hacker One, they didn't have any hardware exploits. It was all for their software and their apps and things. They changed that within hours of me once I finally was able to get a hold of someone. It was just very difficult to get a hold of someone, but now I think they've made it more streamlined and easier. And I was I was impressed with their responses. Um, like I said, I had the one negative comment, but the rest of them, I thought it was great. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think Domain.com. Switch over to medium can. There we go. And you can get it to just spit out the codes? Yep, we're going to go to the body control module. Body control module, and uh, so all I do is I click in here, and I tell it, hey, can you show me your first, second, third, fourth, and fifth code, and show me some TPMS identifiers as well. Yeah. All right, and then I just hit run. And then what is it, spit out a log? There they are. Oh my god. That's the door code. There's the TPMI. Wait, that's the door code? Yeah, that's the door code to open this. This is, this is it. To, yeah. To break into the vehicle.